Today, I'm going to break down a fascinating assignment I shot in Myanmar for the Smithsonian Magazine, one of my favorite clients ever, and the story is about an elephant tracking program aimed at reducing human-wildlife conflict. I will show you images along the way, and you'll have to wait until the end while I'll show you my five favorite images. Today's episode is sponsored by Wotencraft Bags, my preferred camera bag for all my assignments worldwide. Learn more by using the affiliate link below to feed your camera bag addiction. So today's assignment breakdown is as follows. My client was the Smithsonian Magazine, one of my favorite clients because they do really cool adventurous stories. Uh, they hired me to photograph a story for online and for print and it was about a Smithsonian funded project they were looking for as a cover story. So that means in addition to a full photo story, I needed a vertical cover shot which adds a lot of extra pressure, but also adds a little extra money as well. So the process is as follows. First, the photo editor will reach out to me, typically via email, as a known photo journalist in the region. Not just any photographer gets these assignments. Being a photo journalist requires understanding ethical journalism. And while I'm not writing the story, I still need to be fair. I need to understand the story. I need to write my captions. I need to look at things through the eye of a journalist, not just taking nice pictures. So I had about four days to shoot this story. The magazine pays me a day rate plus all my expenses door to door. So the second I leave Hanoi, my taxi, my airport, my transfer, my food, all that stuff is covered plus my day rate. Once I get the assignment, I choose the gear. So for this assignment, I went with my trusty Leica M10D here and my Leica M10, which I've since sold. And for lenses, I went with my 35 Summulux lens. I didn't have my 50 at the time, and I also went with my 135, but the 35 would be my main workhorse because this would be a little bit of portraits, but mostly reportage, mostly documentary style of photography for this story. Once I have my camera and lenses picked out, I'll go through my bag arsenal, if you will. I'm sure you guys have one as well, and I'll pick out the right bag for the assignment. So for this setup, I went with my trusty Wotencraft bags. So this this story would be reported on remotely, so no writer on the ground with me, just me and my cameras and my lenses trying to understand the story and trying to visually tell it the best I can. So with no finished story, I had to do a little reporting myself beforehand. My editor connected me with a person in Myanmar on the ground who was part of this project, and he would be assisting me with access and setting up logistics for the entire trip. As a freelance photographer abroad, you are expected to be resourceful and figure things out yourself. So once I get a full draft of the story, or in this case, a basic brief, I'll connect with that liaison, in this case provided for me by my editor, but that's not always the case. I'll ask questions and I'll organize logistics based on total time given for the assignment to achieve optimal results for a well-rounded visual story. So a lot of planning goes into this before I even set foot in the country. So I would arrive in Yangon in the evening. We'd set out by car from the hotel together in the morning. So this was a small Mohut village. Mohut is the name of an elephant caretaker in Asia. And the elephants were living here sort of retired from the logging industry and they live chained up part of the day and they're allowed to roam free at other times. And the whole village is somewhat subsidized by the government in a project meant to preserve the elephant population. So for the images, it would be a mix of shots of my main subject, a Smithsonian-funded fellow leading the elephant collaring and tracking program who would be there only a portion of my visit. Uh, it's important to note that I don't personally like humans riding elephants, nor do I condone elephants in captivity, but this article and project are focused on looking for ways to reduce the human-elephant conflict happening in Myanmar with elephants raiding crops, and then in turn the farmers killing those elephants as a result of this. So by understanding the elephant's movement patterns based on elephant's personality traits and solving puzzles, this program aims to find solutions to the conflict, and it's a layered and complicated story. So before you comment hastily, Read the full story below to understand it and understand that this is not a tourist place where people come to ride the elephants. The Mohuts have a long history with these elephants and they do ride them. It's part of the culture. Again, don't agree with it, but understand the full article before you make any judgments. I hope that makes sense. So my entire shooting would take place at this government subsidized Mohut village. Uh, it would be about two and a half days shooting and living at the camp in a small bunk, sharing a room with some of the other people that are part of this project. So my two days would consist of capturing everyday life at the camp, trying to capture a sense of place, a sense of the bond and the life here at the camp. So just 
wandering around solo, documenting what I saw, occasionally stopping people for a portrait, like, hey, can I take your portrait? Uh, trying not to get trampled on and just trying to capture an overall sense of what this place is all about. Full days, wandering, shooting, only stopping for meals, waiting, watching, and basically trying to understand. Uh, one quick note, you guys, I noticed a huge number of my viewers aren't actually subscribers, so if you don't mind helping a photographer out by subscribing, that would be greatly appreciated. It does help me provide free content like this, so take a moment, subscribe, and thank you. The main Smithsonian fellow, my main subject for this story, would show up for only about a day to do the collaring, so putting these giant collars on the elephants, so essentially I'd have about a half day with him, interacting with the elephants, overseeing the collaring, and then set aside some time for portraits of him as he would be the main subject for that important cover shot. And since it's the cover, I need to leave room on the top for the masthead for the title of the magazine. So I had to factor that in the back of my mind while I'm trying to compose the shot. So I blocked off some time with him during the last hour of the day, what I thought would be golden hour, magic hour for portraits, just hoping for a beautiful light. For something like this, what I'll do is find a location ahead of time that works best for light, that gives me the most options for a background. I'll plan as much as possible before I can so that when I shoot, I'm ready to go. And so if other show up like trying to get an elephant in the right place trying to line things up I'm prepared and I can get the shot and with time planning and patience I got lucky and it all worked out quite well the coloring happened so quickly as I knew it would so I covered myself by shooting the lead up portraits of one of the technicians let's call him who's going to be putting the collar on the elephant himself detail shots of the collar and such and when it was go time it did happen fast I tried not to get in the way tried not to get trampled and basically I worked close and pulled out far. I ended up with just a couple close and medium shots because it all happened so fast. So I had a nice mix of portraits, a nice mix of daily life, a nice mix of the action, the coloring of the elephants, a nice mix of the Mahuts well, riding the elephants really early in the morning before sunrise. But the best shots worked at sunrise where the elephants all come to this one area and the Mahuts go into this little lake and they bathe the elephants and the sun was just magical in that moment. That's what I love about being a photographer, moments like this. And it did happen rather quickly. The light was beautiful, but only for a short period of time. So you have to be prepared, and I was, because the light gets really harsh really quickly. It was just perfect light and moments, all I could possibly ask for. It showed the bond that I was hoping to capture. It brought emotion to the story, and it was just special. This is why I'm a photojournalist, to bring stories like this to life, and that was my favorite moment. On the final day, I caught word the government officials were going to show up for some sort of official visit, so things got really serious really quickly, and I arranged transport just to get out of there as quickly as possible. And, well, why, you might ask? Well, Myanmar isn't exactly welcoming to journalists, and I wasn't working there under any sort of journalism visa, which could result in jail. Sad, but true. So that might lead you to ask, like, why not just register properly and avoid this and go there with a proper journalism visa? Well, simply put, registering would be a whole other set of problems too long to get into in this episode. But one, probably just say no to me because it's easier for that. Or two, they allow me to go and I have a government minder shadowing me the entire time. So I don't want to deal with all that, so I just decided to risk it. So, and also I had what I needed, so I just decided to get out of there and be safe and be sure. I went back to Hanoi, back to sifting through a few thousand images, capturing those images, light toning, color and contrast, narrowing down the images to about 75 or so to file to my editor to upload to the server. They were thrilled about the images. I was happy too and happy I didn't get arrested or trampled. I got the cover with this image here and I was proud of my work for about a minute or so before doubt creeps back in, but I'm happy to have another adventure notch on my belt and grateful to be able to do what I love to do even if I constantly doubt myself as a photographer and doubt myself like, why are they sending me to Myanmar? Other people doubt me, so why shouldn't I doubt me? But I shouldn't doubt myself because I do this a lot and I do it at a high level. So I'll end with my favorite five images here and some metadata for those who care about that kind of stuff. And if you have any comments or questions, ask me in the comments section below. I like to have a dialogue with my audience. Read the full story in the link. It's amazing what they're trying to do and how they're trying to help. It's an older story, yes, but read it. It'll help you understand a little bit more about what they're trying to achieve. Thank you guys for tuning in. Here are the images. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll put some music. I'll put some images. These are my favorite five. Let me know what you guys think. I'll end right here.